Not all marbles are the same size. For a project I'm working on, I bought over a thousand marbles and I quickly discovered that they're all different sizes, sometimes varying as much as three millimeters. I really need a bunch of marbles, like a thousand of them, to all be within one millimeter of tolerance. So this is my quest to build a machine that can sort marbles automatically and just give me a bunch of marbles that are all relatively the same size within one millimeter. So the idea is that these metal rails diverge and a marble will just fall right through at the correct dimension and land in one of these jars. And then all the marbles in the jar will be almost the exact same size. I designed it all in Fusion 360 and then I went to the dollar store to get some cheap jars and I found these candles that were perfect, but they seemed to be cheaply machined. So some of them had a horrible bend and I used a can of Dr. Pepper as a cheap square to determine whether they're actually straight up and down or not. Then I needed somebody to get rid of the wax, so I built this jig that I put into my oven and the wax slowly drained out of each candle. It was a pain, but it worked. All these jars are fitted into these holes on this piece of machined wood. I made the cam program and got it all loaded up, and it took about 20 minutes to machine all the holes out, and it ended up looking pretty good. I left a small gap around each hole so that I could use a little bit of felt to put the jar in and it would squeeze into the felt to hold the jar in place. The jars fit perfectly and then I cut some felt circles out just to dampen the marbles when they first fall in. Next is this track that directs the marbles into the jars. It's also machined out of wood. This toolpath is also cutting out the rest of the support structure parts. And the wheel is a neat system. The holes aren't actually perpendicular to the face of the wheel. They turn inward slightly so the marble can fall out, which you'll see more of that later. These are all the machined parts just lined up so you can see all of the CNC'd parts. These close-ups show how insanely fine of a finish you can get by just having a really, really tight tool path. It, it's, it really surprises me how good CNC'd wood can look. This super cheap stepper motor drives the wheel. It's like insanely cheap, probably two bucks or less. I think they use these in air conditioners to move the fan around and it's just a friction fit into this part. It's another benefit of CNC. You can get such a tight tolerance that friction fits are just so easy to make. These columns support the rails and the tracks and the marble reservoir. I tried to keep the wheel simple, just friction fits onto the shaft of the stepper motor, and I verified that the stepper can provide enough torque to actually lift marbles with the wheel. That was pretty concerning because these steppers don't have too much torque. The wheel didn't exactly work how I expected, so I need to put some wire just to keep the marbles from falling out of the sides. And I ended up using a lot of wire in this project. I didn't intend to at first, but it looks kind of cool in the end. And I think it adds to the overall, I don't know, uh, marble apothecary look of the entire system. It ended up working great. There is a problem with the marble pressure at the bottom, where sometimes they're not fed into the holes correctly, but that's fine with me. The rails are made of 2020 aluminum extrusion, and they've been like coated black. They're held on with these M5 bolts, and you can change how far apart they are just by unscrewing and rescrewing. Now I'm installing the tracks, and I put this little piece of wood on at just the right angle to make sure the marbles can roll down into the tops of the jars. Here's more wire. I realized I needed a way for the marble to roll down from the wheel into the tracks, so I put this little mini track. This is all part of the marble reservoir all the marbles can sort of bounce on this wire and fall into place. These little wings hold the backing of the marble reservoir in place. So glue them up, fit them on, and the marble reservoir clamps right on. Looks kind of like a 70s chair or something. A brief wire interlude. I didn't know this until I worked on this project, but you can actually take twisted up wire and use your drill to I'll make it almost perfectly straight. It's amazing. And then I shined it up with a bit of salt and vinegar, and uh, now I've just got a ton of, of just perfectly straight wire that I can use to build the rest of the wire parts. So here's some fences for the marble reservoir made out of that wire.
And then I needed to make all these little fences for the marble track so that the marbles could, like this one was a major pain, invented this so that the marble can drop in. And I marked out space for enough bumper rails that the marbles won't skip tracks when they fall through. If I could redesign this part, I would just make these like uh, holes deeper, but alas. Also, this looks really cool. I think it looks cooler than just the bare wood. So, you know, if I were to build this again, I'd do the same design. I think it looks neat. Sometimes the marbles were bouncing out of the back, so I used this super thick watercolor paper as a backstop. This is the first test of having all the parts in place. It's pretty mesmerizing to just watch the marbles. Okay, this is where things get really exciting. So I've had the machine running for maybe 20 minutes and the marbles create these incredible distribution patterns. I especially love how that middle one is just clearly most of the marbles are that size. It's crazy to me to think of whatever manufacturing process created these marbles. For some reason, none of the white marbles are in that fourth jar. I've run the test for a while, so now I'm gonna fine tune the rails so that we get a more distributed distribution of marbles. So I want them closer to the left and also closer to the right. I'm marking this one with an S for small. And on this side, I'm gonna mark it with an L for large. And then I'm gonna use the small and large marbles to fine tune the rails. Basically, I want the small marble to be in the very left jar and the large marble to wind up in the very right jar. And if it's tuned properly, then that distribution of marbles should be more spread out among all the jars, hopefully. So I'm putting in the marble here and just ever so slightly moving this rail so that the large marble can just slip right through at the very end. And I'm doing the same thing on the small side. So I'm fine tuning, just moving it ever so slightly out so that the small marble falls through right at the very beginning. Now that I've tuned it, I'm removing all the marbles from every single jar and I'm gonna rerun the entire test, hoping that the distribution is more spread out among all the jars this time. Now this is the final run of the machine after I've tuned it from that first test. I hope you noticed that I turned the party lights on. Such a momentous occasion is being able to sort all the marbles automatically. The party lighting is a must have, definitely. This is the part where everything starts to go wrong and I start questioning every life decision I've ever made. Uh, and I have to pull out the stick to manually run my automatic machine. So, you know, what is an automated system if you don't have to manually kick it every once in a while? Now I'm gonna unlock hyperspeed just to show you how cool it is to see the distribution grow over time. At this point, it's clear that the marbles favor that jar, what is it, jar seven? And they are, have one or two of them have just completely fallen out of the jar. So I replace that jar with an empty jar and then we're just gonna let that one fill up. And at the end, I'll stack it so you can see how many marbles fell into that jar. It's amazing that they prefer that jar so much. 
the marble reservoir can only hold so many marbles, so I have to keep refilling it periodically. These are some of the final marbles falling in. It's like, man, super exciting. I'm just, at this point, wow. Seeing this distribution emerge from a bunch of disorganized marbles all combining to form this, I don't even know what type of distribution that is. To me, it looks like a killer whale or something, an orca, an orca distribution. But the tuning was successful in that the far left jar now has a lot of marbles in it. And look at the far right jar. It's almost halfway full. It tapers off, then there's that desert of jars, and suddenly that spike at the end. That's just amazing. So by size, the distribution is fascinating, but also look at the colors of the marbles. We see a lot of black marbles in the first couple jars, then mostly white marbles at the peak of the graph, and then more black marbles as it trails off. But we do still see white marbles at the very beginning and at the very end. So now I'll stack that final jar right in the middle. And wow, that is an orca distribution for sure. The dorsal fin, the tail at the end. Amazing. I, that could not be planned better. This just happened to come from the marble manufacturer. It makes me really sad that my next project needs these marbles because this looks just too cool to me. Who would have thought that sorting marbles by size would create such a beautiful graph? Also, the marble apothecary aesthetic turned out perfect. Those candles really paid off. I was going to just use cardboard to hold the marbles, but I'm really glad I went through all the trouble to get the wax out of those candles because it turned out neat. Closing thoughts. I set out to build a system that would sort marbles by size because I didn't see the value in having outlier marbles. But in building the system, I discovered how beautiful of a creation can be made by incorporating all of the outliers into the system. The final image of this display is so cool because of the uh, variation between the marbles. So that that was unexpected to me. I'm, I'm really glad that I went through with this. So, yeah, there it is. Sorting marbles by size. <laughs>